Now I want to do the carbon NMR of the same compound that we covered in the proton tutorial. And as I mentioned in the lectures, carbon NMR is much simpler to report because you don't have any integration to worry about or splitting um, so far as the, the level of NMR that we're doing in this course. So how many carbon NMR signals would you expect to see from this same compound as before? Well, first of all, you need to look, is there any symmetry? And the answer to this particular question is no. So how many different carbon environments are there in this molecule? Well, we have one here, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11 carbons. And they're all different. So you'd see 11 peaks or 11 signals in your carbon NMR spectrum for this molecule. If you didn't see 11, then that would mean that you didn't have this compound. If you saw more than 11, you may have this compound plus impurities. If you saw less than 11, it would mean you didn't have this molecule in there at all. So whereabouts on the NMR spectrum, the chemical shift from zero to about 200, would you expect to see these individual carbons? And again, we would need to number them to be able to answer that question in an exam. Make sure you don't forget the carbons that don't have any hydrogens on. So again, if we number these out, then you simply have to look at the correlation charts that you were given in lectures and analyze where you think each of these carbons comes. So carbon one, it's a simple methyl group attached to carbon. And if you look at correlation charts, they come typically around 10 ppm. Carbon 2 is a CH carbon, but it's attached directly to a carbonyl. So that carbonyl influences where this carbon comes. So it's not quite as low as 10, but it comes up around 20 to 40 ppm. Now, chemical th uh, compact carbon-3, it's further away from that carbonyl, but notice it's directly attached to oxygen. So that oxygen withdraws the electrons away from carbon, and it has a much greater effect on where it comes in the spectrum. And if you look at your charts, you'll see that it comes between 50 and 80 ppm. Similarly, carbon-4 is directly attached to nitrogen. But as we saw in the proton MR, the nitrogen is not as electron withdrawing or not as electron negative as oxygen. So it doesn't have as, uh, as much of an effect, but it still can be found between 30 and 60 ppm. Then we have these six benzene type carbons. They are all aromatic. So they're all going to come in the region of 120 to 160 ppm. But those that have hydrogens on, 7 and 6, will be slightly lower. And those that don't have any, carbon, any hydrogens on, so 5, 8, 9 and 10, will be a little bit higher. So if you look at your charts again, you'll see that 
A R C, which is carbon 5, and that means it's an aromatic carbon with no hydrogens on, they come at around 140 to 160 ppm. Whereas carbon 6 has a hydrogen on, remember, and aromatic CHs, again looking at the charts, they come around 120 to 140 ppm. 7 is the same, but remember when we talk about exact values, the chlorine and the amine also have an effect, but the range is going to be the same between carbon 6 and 7. 8, 9 and 10 are all examples of carbons with no hydrogens on, so they will all come at between 140 to 160 ppm. And it'll be the same for carbon 9 and carbon 10. But again, the chlorine, the ketone, the ether will all have an effect to exactly where it comes. And then finally, we have the ketone at 11. And ketones are very electron deficient, the carbon, and they come around 170 to 200 ppm. And that is the carbon in the mar of that compound.